Sorry for the delay in this week's review. As I mentioned last week, I went to an anime convention just 15 minutes away from my place, and I had a great time. I hung out with an old friend, got a look at Christine Marie Campanos' amazing drawing skills, and even sat in on a fan panel about magical girls from around the world, where I learned some interesting history about them, as well as some intriguing future entries into the genre. I also managed to give the hostess my business card, so if she's watching this right now, I hope you enjoyed this review as well as all my future videos. Alright, so formalities out of the way, let's take a look at the conclusion to this May story arc, which features a character who's already in the ranks for one of my all-time favorite yellow cures, and that's a high bar. We open with a flashback to Homari's past when she looked a lot more like a traditional Yui Ogura character. Seriously, I can't be the only one amazed at how the Queen of Lowly Voices managed to pull off such a masculine tone that even rivals Akira. I mean, I've heard her use lower pitched voices in the past, but this definitely deserves special mention. Anyway, while we don't see the accident that put her in her current situation, we do see the aftermath of it of her symbolically cutting off her ponytail and discarding her former life. All this heavy stuff is however irrelevant in the present as Homari had to help out at Harry's new shop. It had a horrible mismatch of decor that would even have Corel Deville calling it gaudy. She simplified the layout, turning it into a much more accessible shop. She then posted about it on her Custa account, which I'm guessing is an advertiser friendly version of Instagram. You know, maybe this whole series is just trying to use subliminal messages to get kids to integrate more of Google and social media into their lives. Not that I would know anything about that. Anyway, thanks to Homari, business was booming at Harry's. And on the opposite end of the spectrum, Charlie's chain of failures had upset his higher ups, and he was about to be handed his pink slip. His superior, Istora, was about to do the deed when the literal big man upstairs gave him one last chance. Gotta give this company credit, they have an excellent policy for following all the steps involved in raising and executing death flags. As for Harry and his business... And there's more of the Kuzuma-san that we all know and love. Meanwhile, in spite of getting closer to two, Homari still wasn't looking to tag Hana or Saya as new BFFs on her Kirstagram posts. This led into, honestly, one of my favorite scenes of the season, with the girls just talking about their differences and how, strangely enough, they admired each other because of those differences. It's all excellent character building, with Hana even acknowledging that she was overly impulsive, and as a result, her befriending methods weren't well thought out. A team leader who actually acknowledges their faults. Hana, you are officially better than most of your contemporaries. Add on top of that some great lighting and good animation of Hana on the swing, and you've got a really beautiful scene that I wish we had more of in Precure these days. Oh, and Homari's reaction to all this was just the cherry on top. Okay, now she's looking more like a traditional yellow cure. Unsurprisingly though, the festivities were broken up by Charlie, who took Homari and executed one of the more devious plans for a B-list pre-cure villain. He put Homari on the narrow ledge of a high structure. There was a neighboring building within jumping distance, but then he proceeded to mentally break her by not only reminding her of her trauma, but also pointing out the fact that she's really out of practice and has grown significantly since her failed jump. Actually, here's a thought. Did she fail that jump because she was going through a growth spurt? I've actually looked into this, and there is a correlation between figure skaters going through a slump after entering puberty due to them needing to adjust their balance and coordination. It's an interesting concept that I do hope they bring up later. Also, nice face there, dude. You're just a few details off from looking like a Kakigurui character. Anyway, he creates an Oshibaida out of her depression. Hana and Saiyan managed to somewhat hold it off, but needed help. Luckily, while she had fallen a great amount since her figure skating days, seeing Kagutan reminded Homari of the talk she had with the two and how she's not alone anymore, and can look towards the future with some support. She briefly regrows her ponytail and joins in as the pre-cure of power, Cure at Wall. And again, this was a really good fight scene. Yeah, it was nowhere near as amazing as last week's. But I am a sucker whenever they use the opening as an insert song. Also, this little bit right here puts a big smile on my face. Physics of Final Fantasy, don't fail me now! 
She even delivers a drill kick Ren Akiyama would be envious of. With the day one, Homari officially joined the team, Charlie was on his way to the unemployment line, and the newly formed core trio of the series shared in a nice little 80s style laughing ending. I feel fairly safe in saying that this introduction arc for Kira Etoile was an almost complete success. Now I say almost because there's still some minor complaints that I can bring up. First and foremost, I kind of wish there was a little more to Homari's backstory. I mean, not to downplay the effects of trauma, because for me, that's more than enough valid reason for trepidation. I'm just saying, from a storytelling perspective, it's not much to go off of. There were hints of other possible details that I hope they bring up in future arcs. Also, Homari's recovery at the end felt a little rushed, though I wouldn't call it that far out of left field. Because really, these complaints are somewhat invalidated when we have really effective scenes of the Precure just examining each other's quirks. It's good character building like this that really makes me appreciate this season. Next week looks like they're going to be taking a bit of a breather after three straight episodes of some heavier material, which, yeah, I think they've earned it. And until then though, Feral for now my friends, and... You know what, I think I need to prove why I'm worthy of this new batch that says I am a professional magical girl enthusiast. Just as soon as I work off these cramps from this post-con syndrome. Ow, 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 ow.